This is a very late response to WebSnar's response to a Gisbert clip called How to Prove There is No God. I hope uh, the response does not have a date limit because I'm seriously out of uh, date here. Uh, in the months since that post, Nick Gisbert has been banned from YouTube. But hopefully it's possible to um, get a uh, reposted uh, version of it somewhere. While WebSnarf's arguments makes a lot of sense, I would like to try to defend uh, the way Gisbert uh, dealt with the uh, issues. So, um, Gisbert said that there is no way to prove a negative like God does not exist. That, however, does not mean that the existence of God and the non-existence of God is on the same footing. He then uh, mentions the teapot argument, um, which was posited by uh, Bertrand Russell, um, where one imagines that there is a teapot in orbit around the sun. Now, since one cannot prove that such a teapot does not exist, should one call oneself agnostic about the existence of an orbiting teapot? Um, well, of course not. Websnarf mentions that in mathematics you can prove a negative. Um, however, in the real world you don't get a fixed set of um, axioms. You've got to make basic assumptions inferred from uh, observations and thus made plausible but not certain. Even though logic doesn't uh, directly um, tackle the uncertainties of the real world, there are mathematical tools that can handle plausibility, and that brings me to the next point. Gisborne concluded that God's existence, just like the orbiting teapot, was unlikely. Websnarf, however, said that Putting a likelihood on God may not be meaningful because probability measures the number of successes divided by the size of the universe. This does not follow a standard definition of probability. Um, even though you could possibly justify it, Websnarf, uh, you could make a lot of probability statements inaccessible or even meaningless. It's not easy to see how that definition would give you a probability of one sixth of getting a six on your next throw of a dice. Now, um, discussion of probability made me uh, interested because, you see, I'm a statistician. Oh, wow, you say, a statistician. How interesting. Probability has a strict mathematical definition. But uh, that definition doesn't answer what probability is in the real world. Now there are two schools about that. Definition 1, the frequentist one, says that the probability of an event is the long-term ratio of that event. That is the number of experiments where the event happened divided by the number of experiments when the number of experiments goes to infinity. The WebSnarf definition of probability seems to be closest to this one. Uh, frequentist probability does not allow you to tackle probability head-on, but there are indirect measures that kind of answers the, um, these questions in a roundabout manner. Definition 2, the Bayesian definition, states that probability is a direct measure of plausibility. Often when the word probability is used, it is uh, in everyday conversation. Uh, it is meant as plausibility, and the definition supports it. It also seems that this is the definition that uh, supports talking about the probability of God, or for ma that matter, orbiting teapots, or the existence of Santa Claus. Box and James uh, showed that if you want a um, mathematical description of plausibility, that takes the form 
prob probability um, and that's interesting so let's go to an example uh, the reason we say that the probability of getting a 6 on uh, the next throw of a dice is 1 over 6 is simply because every outcome of the dice is as plausible to us in Bayesian statistics you start with an initial probability of a particular theory in the prior uh, new data is then processed by updating the, the prior with the likelihood the likelihood is the probability of getting the data for that particular theory this together with the calculations same calculations for the candidate uh, theories produce the updated probability the posterior probability. Now, one result of this updating is that uh, the simplest model that describes the data adequately tends to get the largest posterior probability and is thus preferred. So that's Occam's razor right there. That's bad news for the orbiting teapot and especially for the existence of God prior to data. God needs to be an incredibly complex uh, being and there's no known mechanism that explains why he should exist. Another result is that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. A low prior will have to be counted with a high likelihood in order for an initially unlikely theory to become probable. For religious claims such extraordinary uh, data has uh, not been found yet and that's bad news for the day Pro the probability for God's existence will still be positive uh, it hasn't been disproven yet but if the probability is extremely low and it is I think and as long as no extremely reliable data pointing the other way appears it makes sense to call oneself atheist rather than agnostic um, lastly atheist may uh, not want to talk about the probability of God because of Pascal's wager I don't think you uh, need to fear that uh, tired old argument uh, maybe I will make a video about it uh, sometime in the future Okay.